Ever wonder why you struggle with self-confidence? It's a question we've all asked ourselves, and while there's no one-size-fits-all answer, there are common habits that can chip away at our self-esteem. Today we're diving deep into the 10 confidence-killing habits that might be holding you back. These habits, often overlooked, can subtly erode your belief in yourself, leaving you feeling less than your best. They range from self-doubt and negative self-talk to perfectionism and fear of failure, amongst others. But don't worry, we're not just going to list these habits and leave you to fend for yourself. No, we're going to provide practical advice, real-life stories, and actionable guidance to help you overcome these confidence underminers. Our aim? To help you recognize and conquer these habits, paving your way to unshakable self-confidence. So buckle up and prepare to embark on a journey towards unshakable self-confidence. Meet habit one, self-doubt. It's that nagging voice that whispers, you can't do it. It's the shadow that casts doubt on your abilities and it's the wall that stands between you and your confidence. It's like a thief that sneaks in and steals your self-belief, leaving behind a trail of insecurity and hesitation. But let's be clear, self-doubt is not your truth. It's merely a habit that can be broken. Let's take a look at a real life story to illustrate this. There was a young woman named Sarah who had always dreamed of starting her own business. However, self-doubt held her back, making her question her abilities and potential. She spent years stuck in a job she didn't love, all because she doubted whether she could succeed on her own. But one day, Sarah decided she'd had enough. She started challenging her self-doubt, replacing it with positive affirmations and reminders of her past successes. She sought mentorship, took courses to build her skills and surrounded herself with supportive, like-minded individuals. Over time, she managed to transform her self-doubt into self-confidence. Today, Sarah is a successful entrepreneur, running a business she's passionate about. Her story is a powerful reminder that self-doubt is not a life sentence. It's a habit that can be unlearned. It's a barrier that can be dismantled. It's a shadow that can be outshone by the bright light of self-confidence. Remember, you are capable and deserving. Habit two, negative self-talk. Picture this, you have a friend who constantly tells you that you're not good enough, you'll never succeed, and every mistake you make is a catastrophic failure. How long would you tolerate this friend? Not long, I bet. Yet this is exactly how we treat ourselves when we indulge in negative self-talk. This internal dialogue can be a fierce critic, undermining our self-esteem more effectively than any external voice. It's like having a personal bully living in your mind constantly chipping away at your confidence. But just like a real-life bully, this internal critic thrives on your reaction to it. The more you buy into the negative self-talk, the stronger it gets. Now, let's switch gears and talk about Sarah. Sarah was a young woman who struggled with negative self-talk. She was always her own harshest critic, constantly belittling herself. But Sarah decided to change. She started by becoming aware of her negative self-talk. Then she challenged it. Every time a negative thought popped up, she would counter it with a positive affirmation. Over time, Sarah noticed a shift in her mindset. She was kinder to herself, more forgiving of her mistakes. She started to believe in her abilities and her self-esteem soared. So remember, the way you talk to yourself matters. Negative self-talk can be a confidence killer, but it doesn't have to be. Speak to yourself like you would to someone you love. Habit three, comparison. It's a habit that's as old as human civilization itself, but in this digital age, it has taken on an entirely new dimension. When we constantly compare ourselves to others, we're setting ourselves up for disappointment. You see, comparison is like a thief in the night, stealthily chipping away at our self-esteem, leaving us feeling inadequate and unfulfilled. Let's delve into a story that illustrates this. Consider Alex, an accomplished musician in his own right, but he was always comparing himself to his peers. He'd see their successes, their awards, their accolades, and he'd feel a pang of inadequacy. It was a cycle that seemed endless. But one day, Alex had an epiphany. He realized that his journey was his own and he couldn't compare it to anyone else's. He started focusing on his own growth, his own achievements, and stopped looking over his shoulder to see what everyone else was doing. In time, Alex's self-esteem started to blossom. He felt more confident more at peace with himself. He was no longer shackled by the constant need to measure up to others, and this had a transformative effect on his life. His music flourished, 
his relationships improved, and he felt genuinely happy. So the next time you find yourself falling into the comparison trap, remember Alex's story. Remember that each of us is on a unique journey with our own peaks and valleys. Your journey is unique, embrace it. Habit four, perfectionism. Perfectionism is like a mirage in the desert, forever out of reach. It's a relentless pursuit that can leave us feeling perpetually unsatisfied, and it's a major confidence killer. When we set unattainable standards for ourselves, we're setting ourselves up for a roller coaster of stress, anxiety, and self-doubt. It paints a picture of success that's not based on our authentic selves, but on an impossible ideal. Now let's talk about Jane. Jane was a high achieving professional who prided herself on her meticulous attention to detail. For years, she chased perfection, believing it was the key to her success. Yet it left her feeling drained, unfulfilled and lacking in self-confidence. One day Jane had a realization. She began to see her pursuit of perfection not as a strength but as a barrier to her happiness and self-confidence. She decided to shift her focus from being perfect to being authentic. She started to celebrate her accomplishments, no matter how small, and learned to accept her mistakes as opportunities for growth, not as signs of failure. This shift in mindset was transformative for Jane. She started to feel more confident, not because she was perfect, but because she was real, flawed, and human. She discovered that it was her authenticity, not her perfection, that truly defined her success. Remember, perfection is an illusion. Authenticity is real. Habit five, fear of failure. Now this is a big one. This fear holds many of us back, making us believe that if we fail, we lose. But let's reframe that thought. What if I told you that failure is not a dead end, but a detour to your final destination? Imagine you're an explorer, and each failure is an uncharted territory you've discovered. Sure, it's not the land of success you were hoping for, but it's still valuable. It's a place where you learn what doesn't work, where you gather experience, where you build resilience. And each time you set foot on these lands, you're a step closer to your ultimate goal. Let me share a story. Once there was a young man who dreamed of being a writer. He poured his heart and soul into his work, only to face rejection after rejection. But he didn't let his fear of failure stop him. Instead, he used each failed attempt as a stepping stone, learning from his mistakes, honing his craft. And today, that man is known as one of the greatest authors of our time, Stephen King. So, the next time you find yourself at the edge of a daring venture, remember failure is not the end. It's a stepping stone, leading you towards success. After all, the sweetest victories are those that come right after the moments we thought we lost. Failure is not the opposite of success. It's part of it. Before we continue, here's a quick reminder. If you're finding this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. It really helps us out. And don't forget to comment below with your thoughts and experiences. We'd love to hear from you. Also, if you haven't done so already, make sure to hit that subscribe button for more content like this. Your engagement helps us reach more people through the YouTube algorithm and continue this confidence boosting journey. Now let's get back to it. Habit six, lack of self-care. Let's dive into this. Self-care, a term often misconstrued as indulgence or laziness, is in fact an essential facet of building and maintaining self-confidence. It's about honoring your own needs and taking the time to replenish your energy in order to give more to the world around you. Think of it like a car. If you don't fuel it or maintain it regularly, it's going to break down sooner or later. The same principle applies to us humans. Ignoring self-care is like ignoring the fuel light on your car's dashboard. It's a surefire way to run out of energy and end up stranded on the road to self-confidence. Now let's share a story. Meet Max. Max was a high-performing professional, always on the go, always saying yes to every request. He was always there for others, but rarely for himself. The constant grind began to take a toll on his health, relationships, and you guessed it, his self-confidence. One day, Max decided to make a change. He started setting aside time for himself, whether it was to read a book, go for a run, or simply relax. This wasn't easy at first. He had to overcome feelings of guilt and the fear of letting others down. But as he continued, he noticed a change. His energy levels rose, his relationships improved, and his self-confidence started to soar. Max's story illustrates the power of self-care. It's not about being selfish, it's about respecting yourself enough to know that you can't pour from an empty cup. 
Remember, self-care is not selfish, it's self-respect. Scene script, habit seven, over-apologizing. Picture this, you're in a meeting and you feel the need to apologize before you share your thoughts or ideas, almost as if you're sorry for taking up space or time. This is the habit of over-apologizing. It's a confidence killer that makes you appear less assertive and can lead others to undervalue your contributions. Let's talk about Jane. Jane was a chronic over-apologizer. She would apologize for the smallest things, even when they were not her fault. But one day she realized that her constant apologies were causing people to take her less seriously. So she decided to make a change. Instead of saying sorry all the time, Jane began using phrases like, excuse me, or let me share my thoughts. This small shift made a huge difference. Jane's colleagues started to see her as more confident and her ideas were given the consideration they deserved. Remember, you don't need to apologize for existing. Habit eight, seeking external validation. It's a trap many of us fall into, constantly gauging our worth based on others' perceptions. But here's the catch. The applause of the world is fleeting and unreliable, leaving you perpetually in search of the next compliment or like. Imagine a life where you're forever on a roller coaster, riding the highs of affirmation and sinking into the lows of criticism. That's the reality of relying on external validation. But let's consider John, a once promising artist who almost lost his passion in the chase for public approval. The turning point? A simple realization that he was losing himself in others' opinions. John began to paint for himself, to express his emotions, his thoughts, not for accolades. The result? Not only did John find fulfillment in his art, but his work also gained authenticity, resonating with a wider audience. Remember, your worth is not defined by others' opinions. Habit nine, avoiding challenges. It's a natural instinct to avoid discomfort. We often steer clear of challenges, preferring the comfort of our known world. But what we often overlook is that by dodging these challenges, we are hindering our personal growth and confidence. Consider the story of Rosa. Rosa was someone who would always play it safe, avoiding any situation that tested her abilities or pushed her out of her comfort zone. But one day, she decided to confront her fears. She took on a project at work that she'd been avoiding for months, a project that was definitely a challenge for her. And guess what? Not only did she successfully complete it, but she also gained a newfound confidence in her abilities. She realized that by facing her fears, she was able to grow and become a stronger version of herself. So remember, challenges are opportunities for growth. Scene script. Habit 10, not setting boundaries. Boundaries are our personal do not disturb signs. They are crucial for maintaining our self-respect and consequently, our self-confidence. When we don't set boundaries, we let others dictate our worth, our space and our time. This can lead to feelings of resentment, frustration and a sense of being overwhelmed. Consider the story of Ella. Ella was a people pleaser, always saying yes when she wanted to say no. She felt like she was losing herself, her confidence dwindling every day. But then, Ella decided to set boundaries. She started to value her time, her space, her decisions, and most importantly, herself. The change was transformative. As she asserted her boundaries, her self-respect skyrocketed and so did her confidence. Remember, setting boundaries isn't about being selfish. It's about respecting and valuing yourself. Setting boundaries is a form of self-love. We've covered a lot of ground together. We've taken a deep dive into the 10 habits that can erode self-confidence from the insidious whispers of self-doubt to the harsh demands of perfectionism. We've explored how comparison, fear of failure, and a lack of self-care can chip away at our self-esteem. We've looked at how over-apologizing, seeking external validation, avoiding challenges, and not setting boundaries can keep us from reaching our full potential. But more importantly, we've seen how real people have overcome these habits, using them as stepping stones on their path to unshakable self-confidence. We hope these stories and insights have inspired you and given you actionable steps to start your journey. We'd love to hear about your own experiences and victories. So engage with us, share your stories and subscribe for more content that will help you build a stronger, more confident you. Start your journey to unshakable confidence today. Remember, you are enough just as you are.